Hi, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I'm here today to play around with some yarn cake dyeing. Yay! I thought that a yarn cake would be appropriate to give a very big happy birthday shout out to our sponsors, Flora and Els. I have done a lot of different variations on dyeing these cakes. Um, a yarn cake is a wound ball of yarn that has this sort of cylindrical shape to it versus being a hand wound ball, which is more spherical. When you dye these cakes, you can get some really, really cool gradients um, because the dye can access the outside, but then there is a tiny bit of access to the yarn going all the way through to the center. But one thing I have never done is dye a cake from both ends. So today we are gonna dye this cake uh, from one end and then we're gonna let it dry, rewind a cake, but this time the outside of the cake will be the inside of the next cake and then we're gonna dye it again. Don't worry, even though we're celebrating a birthday, I'm not gonna bake this yarn into a literal cake this time. <laughs> The yarn that we used is Knitpix Swish DK, which is 100% superwash merino. In my dedicated dye pot, we have 12 cups of water, and there's no vinegar in here yet. Uh, I want to add the dye and the yarn to the pot before we start adding acid, so that way things don't strike a little bit too fast. I am going to add a quarter cup or about 60 milliliters of some Dharma Sour Apple. This is a 1% stock solution that I mixed, oh, probably about a week ago. Let's stir this up. Okay. I have an idea of what I wanna do for the second color, but I'm gonna wait and see how intense and deeply this green penetrates. Uh, so, we are now going to add the yarn cake. The dye bath is really warm. Um, I'm going to raise the heat up a bit. And I think we're about on the bottom, but I do want, I don't want to squish it too much. I want to get it in there. Um, I think we need to add a tiny bit more water. I added another three cups of water. Um, so that gives us a total volume of 15 cups. And now you can see that there is enough water in here so that the cake can float a little bit, water can go over it, and a wrench. Um, just sort of moving that a bit. And now let's start adding some acid. I'm gonna go ahead and add, I think, three tablespoons of white vinegar. And I am going to sort of gently stir this around. And now we're going to sit and wait, and I'll come back in about 15 minutes. I accidentally went a bit longer than we intended, but you can see that a lot of the color has bound to the yarn. Yay! Okay, let's add... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add another tablespoon of vinegar and turn off the heat completely. Uh, on camera, you can see that there's a hint of color in there. Some of it might absorb while we wait, some of it might not. Um, but we're going to let this cool completely so then we can wash it. The dye bath has cooled, so now we are going to remove our yarn and gently squeeze out a lot of the extra liquid. But you can see all of the color is in our yarn. And there's variation. We've got a deep, true green on the outside and then more of that sour apple color towards the middle with paler sections even more towards the center. Let's rinse out our yarn cake. Gently, gently. We're mainly checking for bleeding here. I'm not gonna use soap now. I don't want to tangle or disorder up this cake. Um, but I do just sort of want to check and make sure that we are not bleeding a lot of excess dye. And we're not. So, uh, once the yarn is unraveled, we'll have a full-on washing stage later on. But I am going to go put this through my spin dryer to remove the excess water and then set it aside to dry. There are two ways to proceed at this point. We could take this cake and then just wind the new cake directly, starting at the outside um, and winding the cake so we would get the reverse. 
but I'm gonna go ahead and wind this onto a nitty knotty just because I'm curious what the gradient looks like. Um, and that way we can show what the yarn looks like now to give us something to compare it to once we finish this yarn after the second round of yarn dyeing. I am really impressed that this yarn cake is completely dry right now. I think that that is in a huge part to my spin dryer. Uh, I know that Laundry Alternative is coming out with a new version of the Nina Soft Spin Dryer. Um, whether, I don't know what they're going to call it, but that's why the Nina Soft that I have, and I've linked too many times, has been discontinued. But I will update all of you when I know more information about that. Here is the green gradient. We primarily have this paler green with then these flecks of the dark green through it, finishing at an end that is way more speckled with the green, and then more solid with some pale green specks from the yarn that was very much on the outside. You can see that the outside of our uh, cake did absorb the most color, but we did get color penetration through to the center, likely because I did press the ball in, so we got some color coverage all the way through. I am really excited to see what will happen when we do the second color. So now let's go wind our second cake. And this time we're gonna make sure that this darkest section is in the center of the blank and the paler section is on the outside. Pretty interesting with the yarn cake, you can barely see the darkest shades because they truly are all the way in the center, even like the interior center. You can see a tiny bit more on the bottom, but it does look predominantly the light green because it is. Dye strike to uh, superwash wools faster, uh, but we're going to go and do this again and the techniques for setting up the dye and dye bath itself might be slightly different, but I know we're going to end up with something really, really awesome. In our dye bath, we have 16 cups of water with no vinegar yet, and we are going to add a quarter cup or about 60 milliliters of Jacquard gunmetal. This is a 1% stock solution, so it means that we've added about 0.6 grams of dye to this pot. Because a 1% stock solution means that there's one gram of dye dissolved in 100 milliliters of the solution. Our dye bath is nice and hot, and we're now gonna add our yarn cake. The cake is completely dry, and I am slowly pressing to submerge it. Uh, I think we have a bit more water this time, um, so we are able to get some reasonable coverage. You'll notice that I've not really pressed out a bunch of the bubbles yet. I'm really, well now I kind of am. That's going to allow some color, uh-oh, to head towards the center. Um, but you can see that it's sort of a navy-ish type color. Now I'm going to wait, gosh, I think I'm like debating whether or not I actually want to wait, but I think I'm going to wait five minutes and then we're going to come and start adding some vinegar. All right, five minutes later, let's start adding, oh, so that's one heaping tablespoon, two, three, and four tablespoons of dye right now. Um, I'm just giving it like a gentle little stir. The spoon is red, but there's actually a lot less dye currently in here than it looks. Hopefully our dyes are penetrating a little bit towards the center. Uh, we definitely could do this with a looser wound cake, which usually you can achieve by winding your yarn into a cake and then from that cake winding a second cake. Um, but I am curious to see how this will go and how things will look towards the center. I'm not really sure why it's sort of listing onto one side. Maybe at this point I'll just sort of push it, get some of that air out. Uh, but yeah, we are already starting to clear. Uh, the dye bath itself is looking a little more translucent. Um, but anyway, I am going to let this heat on low for another 10 minutes. After those 10 minutes, our dye bath has almost completely cleared. 
there might be a hint of some color left. Certainly you can see that there's a little bit of a rim around the pot, but almost all of the color is in our yarn cake. So now I am going to just leave the cake in the pot. I've turned off the heat and we're gonna let everything cool completely until I can reach my hands in to touch the cake. I just removed the yarn cake and we've got this deep saturated navy color around. But if you start to peek through, we do see some of that paler green and some of the darker green in the center. So I'm very curious how this will look. Um, but first, I'm really just rinsing it. I'm not going to use soap or anything right now. I just want to make sure that there's not color bleeding and I'm not going to get a down dye all over my spin dryer. Um, and once we have completely unraveled this, I will wash it more thoroughly, but I'm now going to put the yarn through the spin dryer and hang it, well, not hang it, but set it on top of like my drying rack so that way it can dry. The yarn cake is mostly dry and it is beautiful. I love the deep teal that we have in here, these flecks of green, and the brighter green that we can peek in between in the middle. I am now going to go wind this onto my Nitty Knotty. I have wound all of the yarn onto my Nitty Knotty and this gradient is absolutely beautiful. I feel like when you first remove a gradient from the Nitty Knotty you can get a really really good sense of the color. But these reverse speckles from that gunmetal are just awesome. We got more color penetration with the gunmetal, and I'm not sure if it's because it's that much more pigmented of a color or because I started with less acid overall, uh, but this gradient is awesome and there's flecks of the gunmetal all the way through to the end and bits of the green all the way through to the other, which is just so fun. It is now time for the final actual wash of this yarn. I'm not expecting to see any bleeding because we hadn't seen that before, but we do certainly want to rinse out all of the vinegar. Um, in a little bit, I will finally add a little bit of dish soap. Uh, I usually do that, but then I'll put it through the spin dryer one last time, hang it up to dry, and we'll come back for some conclusions. I still can't believe that I did not have this video already on my channel. I love cake dyeing and getting these fun gradients, but doing it from both ends really created an extremely unique, fun, variegated gradient. And I just love it. Els and Flora, our sponsors of today's video, happy, happy birthday. Uh, thank you so much for sponsoring this and one other video. I really hope that you will love the yarn as much as I do. If you're interested in becoming a sponsor of a Dye Pot Weekly episode, this is something that I offer to viewers, individuals like you. Uh, you can get 100 grams of yarn dyed in the video, some shout outs, and more. I take your color preferences into account and try to create a yarn with you in mind. Uh, you can find a link to the listing in the video description and iCard. If sponsorship isn't for you, but you would be interested in getting some shout outs in some videos, then head over and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Patrons can get early access to new videos, behind the scenes sneak peeks, shout outs, Etsy coupons, and more. There will also be a link to that in the video description and iCard. The fun thing about layering colors like this is that you don't have to stop here. You could take the skein and dip dye it to add even more dimension of color. And really, you can keep over dyeing and over dyeing and over dyeing and layering techniques together and create something that is really unique and special. Now, ultimately, sometimes you have to decide, okay, this is where I stop, but it still could be fun to over dye something and if you're not satisfied with the color, that is always an option. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching everyone.